Have you ever wanted to play Total War Rome 2? You know, I think you should play as Carthage, Rome's biggest and most lethal enemy. Wait, what? One unit of pikemen, two units of cavalry? Jesus Christ, in this game Rome has more cavalry variety than Carthage, and Carthage was renowned for its cavalry. Oh well, it looks like I'm just gonna have to go to mods yet again to fix gears issues. Right, where is it? Here it is. Yes. Ah, that's grand. Subscribe. Let's get this party started. Right, let me just activate this unit mod. There we go. You know what? I think I'm going to increase the amount of soldiers in a unit. That would be pretty epic. I think I'm going to double them. Let's go! Ah! It doesn't work! Are you having a laugh? So now I've got to pick between more unit variety or bigger units. Well, the massive gaping question I have to ask my viewers is, why compromise when you can have both? Hi guys, as the introduction suggests, I'm going to be showing you how to change the unit sizes of modded Total War Rome 2 units. I don't know if this will work for any of the other Total War games, it probably most likely will, so it's worth giving it a try if you want to do that. So, the first thing you want to do is you want to download and install all of the mods that you want to use with your Total War Rome 2 game. All of them, not just the unit mods, every single mod. Once you've got all of those mods downloaded, you want to go back in, you want to go into your game, you want to launch it, and you want to get to the main menu. And you want to quit out. Now, the reason why we do these two steps before anything else is because there's been an update to either the Total War Rome 2 launcher or the Steam Workshop, whereby if you download an additional mod, it will then consequently re-download all mods that you already had downloaded. I don't know why it does this, but this will actually revert to the changes that we are going to make in this video. So make sure you download all of the mods that you want to use in the Total War game. Launch the Total War game into the main menu. The reason why we do this is because this will generate the pack files that we need to amend in order to make this change. So make sure you launch at the main menu to get the pack files, quit out, and next thing we want to do is we want to download Pack File Manager. You want to go to this web page here. I will link this in the description below. You want to click on this link here where it says All Software Releases Always. Click here. And you want to download Pack File Manager 5.0.2. It will then download. I'm not going to download it because I already have it. Once you've downloaded it, it will then give you a zip file. You want to extract the entire contents of the zip file into any file directory you want. It doesn't matter, just extract it to wherever, wherever is best for you. You then want to launch the pack file manager.exe. That will then ask you for the directories of your Total War games. If you do not have any, if you don't have one of the Total War games, just click cancel and it works fine. You want to basically link it to the root directory of your Total War games. For example, for Total War Room 2, you would link it to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Total War Room 2, and that's it. Click OK to the ones that you have, click Cancel to the ones that you don't have, and it will bring you bring up something like this. Then you want to go to File, Open, and you basically want to again navigate to your Steam directory. So Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Total War Room 2. You want to go to your data folder and you want to click on the pack file that represents the mod that contains the units that you want to change so you want to click on this little plus sign here you want to click on the plus sign that's next to db now the two tables that we want are the land units table and the main units tables you don't need to amend the naval units tables as far as i'm aware so you want to click on one of them. Sometimes it'll have more than one table here. Most of the time though, we'll only have just one table and you only have to amend the one table, which is obviously more time efficient than doing than them having multiple tables to amend. So to change the unit sizes, what you want to do is you want to change this num underscore men column. Now, as you will see that these are all of the units that the mod adds into the game. It is very inefficient to obviously change the unit sizes one at a time plus there's a chance of human error there so what i'd highly recommend you do is you want to right click on the column here you want to go to apply expression and here you'll see x equal to x times by two 
So I'm doubling the units. Apply expression. It'll highlight everything in red. As you can see, it's doubled all of the units. Well, all of the all of the amount of soldiers that are in the units. And basically, you want to go through and you want to rinse and repeat. So apply expression. X equals to X times by 2. Now, if you are running a double unit mod, you want to obviously times the units by 2. If you are running a triple unit mod, you want to times them by 3. So I'm just going to run through here and I am going to apply these expressions really quickly. And be very careful with what you type into this box here because if you mistype something, the program will error out and it will close down and you will lose your changes. So make sure you save regularly and watch what you type. If it does error out, just relaunch pack file manager and go back into the uh, pack file that you want to amend. Do this. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to go into the land units tables. Now, this is where you change the amount of mounts the soldiers have. So obviously, if you've doubled the amount of soldiers in a cavalry unit, you also need to double the amount of forces there are. Otherwise, what will end up happening is you'll see a weird glitch whereby there's two soldiers on one horse and it looks weird and obviously is not ideal. So to do that, you want to go into the land units tables and you want to just click on the relevant land unit. And you want to go down to num mounts. And again, you want to times this by however many times you want to. So I'm going to times it by two. So X, two, and that'll change all them to 160. I'm going to save it. Now, an important note for chariots, and this is the reason why I actually chose this unit mod as opposed to others to show, is because this unit mod contains chariots. This bit's going to be a bit complicated, but the physical wooden part of the chariot actually counts as a soldier, not the soldiers on the chariot themselves. itself. The actual wooden bit of the chariot, or metallic bit of the chariot, counts as a soldier. The number of mounts is the number of horses per that one physical chariot. So for the chariot, you actually want to revert the amount of horses back to the original state. And I'll show this in game. So in order to do that, it's easy. You click on this little arrow here and anything that's a relatively low number. So eight, four, you just want to click on here to filter them out. Then as you can see, these are all chariots. So I'm going to revert these back to two as such again be very careful with this program it it's got very poor exception handling it, it just closes down if it encounters anything it doesn't like so just make sure you save regularly so yeah 2 to 24 24 would be a general unit i believe let's have a look yeah that's a general unit so that doesn't need to be changed go. Uh, and i'm just going to go through here and i'm going to amend them all I'll explain that chariot thing when I actually get in game because it's a lot easier to explain once I'm in game. So uh, number of mounts, I'm going to save that. I'm going to save, like I said, save regularly because this this software is pretty unstable. So these are chariots. I'm going to change these back to two. Save that. Now, of course, some chariots, you have different types of chariots. You have the um, the larger tire. Oh, that's what happens when you um, when it does something you don't like. Just click OK and um, just reopen whatever it is you were editing. That's why you save regularly with this software. OK, guys, so the following footage is basically just the process of me changing the different tables required. Skip to around the 10 minute, 9 second mark if you just want to get on with it.
Right, so once you are done, what you want to do is you want to just make sure you've saved everything. And you just want to close Pack File Manager. Then you want to go to your Steam game and you want to launch Rome, Total War Room 2. Right, so I know Carthage quite well. So as you can see, the, these are some of the custom units. And you'll notice that some of them will be the correct size. For example, the Carthaginian citizen infantry is 320 soldiers. As I've got a uh, double unit size mod on. Of course, the vanilla units are the same. So as you can see, the vanilla, the vanilla units are no problem because they obviously got doubled with the double unit size mods. As you can see, the custom unit here has, in fact, doubled. Now, you'll notice that some of these custom units haven't doubled, and the reason for that is because they are actually from different unit packs, so I'll need to do the same process with all of the packs that I have installed, but just to prove to you that it works in-game. So, Carthage Union Citizen Infantry. Let's see if I can record it. No, I can't, so let's see. So, for example, da -da -da, where is it? Spears of Balhamon. That's a custom unit. Then we can go to a custom unit in... I actually don't know what custom unit there are in um, Athens. Give me one second. Go to... Um... Webby. I think reformed noble cavalry are custom unit as well. This is just to prove that it works. And you'll have to excuse the battlefield here. Yeah, I've got a battlefield mod on. That increases the size of the battlefields, but it doesn't work correctly with custom battles. Balhamon has blessed us. As you can see, units have increased. And them and it works. As you can see, the cavalry looks good. There's no weird trickery going on with the uh, with the riders and the horses. There's there's the correct amount of riders and the correct amount of horses. So that works. You get the point. Now I'm going to show you the the chariots just to explain them a bit better. Uh, Carthaginian chariots. Okay, so what I was on about with the chariot is that the wooden bit here, that's actually the soldier in the unit table. The horses are the number of mounts in the land unit table. So if, as you can imagine, if I when I clicked on the column to double it, if I'd left it doubled, we would have four horses here per chariot and it would look off, it would it would bug out. So make sure that you, you remember that the mounts are the horses and the soldier, the physical soldier, is actually the wooden chariot bit here. So for example, if there were two soldiers on this chariot, that doesn't matter. The soldier table column represents the wooden bit of the chariot here. So just bear that in mind. I'm pretty sure you guys will figure it out because I'm pretty sure you guys are smart enough to do so. And so yeah, you basically want to repeat that for all of the different unit packs you have and that should double the units for you or triple them or whatever i'd highly recommend that you obviously go through and check most of the units to make sure that all of them are doubled correctly before you start a campaign because there's, there's nothing worse than you know playing as egypt and then working your way up to the Golic area and found that those units haven't been doubled correctly you know that's your campaign ruined essentially so make sure that they've all been doubled correctly to start your campaign any questions? I know it was a bit complicated, just with the chariots. Uh, just post a comment with any questions and I'll clarify things. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.